Good morning, everybody. First and foremost, want to congratulate uh, Coach Van Wyk on 800 victories. That's a great milestone. Uh, done great, uh, obviously, things for San Diego State Aztecs. So congratulations, Coach. I'm um, really excited about that milestone and hope you can make it to 1,600. So good luck with that. Um, congratulations. Uh, as far as uh, baseball's going, you know, we're, we're uh, kind of getting the back stretch of our season. Um, had a nice weekend against Dix Dixie State, even though we made it very interesting. Um, had to walk off a couple games on on Saturday. Um, th that's a good baseball team. They're going to make some noise in the whack moving forward. Um, they, they definitely uh, surprised us a little bit with the New talent they had. Is being recorded. Um, and uh, so heading into uh, Nevada Reno, it's a big series for us. They beat us two out of three here. Um, and so uh, this is a huge weekend for San Diego State baseball. And the idea is to kind of uh, continue to hold on to first first place in the in the conference and, uh, you know, moving forward to hopefully get that automatic bid at the end of the season by winning the regular season championship. But uh, it's kind of where we're at. We're going to, you know, uh, re really a shorter week of practice for us. We're going to practice today and tomorrow. We leave on Thursday for Nevada. We play an unusual Friday-Saturday series based on some travel issues we had. So um, a little shorter week, but uh, hopefully it works well for us and, and we kind of keep rolling offensively and, and our pitching continues to improve, but looking forward to a good weekend up in Reno. Thank you, Coach. We'll open up for questions, and we'll begin with Lee. Hey, Mike, thanks for the time. Uh, did you think your team would be this dynamic offensively at home plate? And secondly, are you going to slug your way and hope you can get to Omaha? <laughs> Has it, it been a challenge to develop quality across the board pitching? Well, you know, uh, first and foremost, my name is Mark. But no I'm big, sorry. no no big deal. Um, I, I look like a Mike, so that's all right. Um, did I think we're gonna slug our way to Omaha? You know, I, you know, I think offensively, you know, we have an experienced group, and so that that bodes well for having you know uh, face some some pitching that has been, you know, kind of across the board. Whether it's you know in in California or you know across the board, especially on the back end of weekends, there's a lot of big numbers being put up across the country. It's starting to settle down a little bit, but I think that means that the pitchers are starting to get a little more comfortable with what they're doing. Just like in our program, you know, I think our guys have an 11 month break and not seeing live pitching or I'm sorry, live hitting, um, you know, that that's a that's you need to have that data. And when you're not doing it, um, it's a difficult task. You know, you're, our guys haven't been repeating pitches in, in, in intended spots where they need to be, whether it's a fastball in a breaking ball away. Um, and so. We're still kind of playing a little bit of catch up with that, but again, it doesn't mean our pitching staff isn't good. We have really good arms that, that throughout our you know top eight, nine guys are really, really good. It's just more of them kind of growing up and, and continue to improving throughout the season. Offensively, again, we just have a really experienced group, um, guys that have kind of bought into a, uh, a system of you know swing the bat, have vicious at bats when you get deeper in the count, and our guys have done a great job with you know especially our two our two strike approach, um, and not giving in, uh, giving you know any at bats away. And so um, I thought this weekend, I will tell you, Lee, is that uh, our, our guys did not look like our offensive guys. I think uh, um, we had uh, Matt Ruddick out of lineup um, on Saturday, both games, and then on Sunday, Cade Miller did not play. And really, um, they're nursing, so, so they're banged up a little bit. So it was a great opportunity for kind of give give some guys an opportunity to play. But um, it definitely uh, uh, impacted our lineup. So we're looking forward to having both those guys back this weekend. It can kind of can hopefully continue the the offensive stuff that we've been putting together throughout the season. Hey, Mark, a follow up uh, in a big <clears throat> picture question: With baseball changing the draft, uh, downsizing the number of rounds, and now going to this supposed a draft league. How do, you, how do you think it's going to impact college kids in terms of them leaving the turn pro or go to this league to try to prove themselves? Well, the draft league is more to kind of showcase themselves in order to get drafted, you know, and so it's going to be guys that are draft eligible type guys that kind of hopefully either improve their their draft stock or improve their position in the draft. Uh, you know, the, the effect of the draft is going to be, again, we're not going to know for you know, a couple of years um, but, but, you know, you think about being a, a major league organization and you're going to draft 20 guys based on what's happened in the past. You know, so many kids have already gotten released by their downsizing their minor leagues. 
that means jobs are very few. And so you draft 20 guys, you're basically eliminating 20 guys off of rosters in your minor leagues. So um, you're going to have to be really good in order to take someone's job at a high A level or, you know, you might plug in at a double A level, whatever it might be, um, as a college player. You know, so you're going to have to definitely prove your worth um, in, in, in the college ranks in order to be drafted. It doesn't really matter, you know, uh, you know, if you're draft eligible, you got to be really good. You know, and I think that's going to affect college baseball uh, moving forward if, if the draft stays the same. Um, so right now you're not going to see guys that are going to be, you know, kind of a, a draft and follow a, lo- a low amount of money given to a guy, a junior, you know, 15th, 16th round guy that they're just going to take a chance on and plug him in. I don't think th- those days might be gone. I think if you're if you're a guy that's going to be drafted in the top 20 rounds, you're going to be moving forward into a great opportunity to move through the system um, into the big leagues. It's just not going to be a roster filler situation anymore. It's not going to be like that. So it will affect some of our guys. I think there's there's guys that that I feel like that are, are that are draft eligible, that are good enough to play professional baseball. They might not get drafted based on the fact that maybe they're not prepared or, or they don't, they're not deemed good enough to be drafted at this point to take someone else's job that's currently playing right now. Thank you. You're welcome. William, we'll go to Evan. Hi, Coach. So you had kind of touched on a little bit Miller and Rubik, our big job, but there were some changes, like you had three different starting left fielders in all three games. Was this some experimentation, or um, are these changes going to be potentially permanent? Well, you know, Ryan Orr's been our left fielder. He's been struggling a little bit, so he's kind of opened up the door a little bit for some guys to get an opportunity. Um, Xavier Carter's been busting his tail all, all year and working to, to you know, provide an opportunity, and sure enough, he stands in there and hits a home run and um, and obviously earns himself uh, more opportunities moving forward. Um, and, and really it's been based on the fact that, you know, um, our left field, you know, spot hadn't been, you know, producing offensively. So, yeah, that's kind of been what we're doing. When we did uh, the previous week at Fresno State, we uh, caught Poncho Ruiz and we put White Hendry in left field. He's a, he definitely has played outfield before, so it was not it wasn't a flyer. He's done it before, um, mm-hmm. and it, it allowed us to plug in a really good bat with with Poncho. He's a good catcher, um, and keep uh, Brian Lee and Hart as the DH spot, and you know kind of keep keep rolling that way. So. Um, moving forward, that's going to be a spot where a guy, uh, somebody can step up and win that job and secure it. But I think the, that, that also change also at third base, you know, we, we still haven't got a secure job at third base, you know, uh, defensively, our guys have broken down. It's probably a weakest spot, you know, and I'm the infield coach, so I can say that, um, we need to Im- improve in that area in order to kind of have, have someone solidify that spot, whether it's Cole Carrig or, Fisher Pyatt, one of them has to step up defensively in order to kind of continue to have that type of playing time. Mm-hmm. And you had mentioned White Hendry <clears throat> took that ball to the neck. It looked like is he good? Is that all settled? Yeah, he's fine. He played the next day. You know, I think uh, at a, an abundance of caution, he got hit in the Adam's apple, and he was really having a difficult time breathing. Um, he was actually going to play left field in the second game. Um, on Saturday, and uh, we, we made the decision to kind of hold him out and see how he felt on Sunday morning in order to have him play on Sunday. And he uh, obviously came out and did okay and was announced the Mountain West Player of the Week. So yeah, I think he's doing just fine. <laughs> okay, then final question from me. Uh, Michael Franis didn't get the start in the second game. It looked like Brian Lee and Hart was an opener for him. Will that be a permanent thing, or once again, is that just something you're experimenting with? We're, we're going to keep doing it, you know, and I think the the way, again, we talked a little bit about our pitching staff, um, you know, the, the critical innings is kind of where we're, we're breaking down, the sixth, seventh, eighth innings where we're breaking down, and the way we kind of thought we could do is, is get an experienced guy like Brian, he can open, get us through two innings, and then we're, we were hopeful that, you know, Michael Paredes could kind of pitch those critical innings, and that's kind of what we've been getting, about a five-inning stint from him. And so if you kind of start doing math, that gets you into the eighth inning. I think we can finish with Trey uh, in that situation. And same thing even with, with Troy. You know, I, we're, we're even thinking about doing that with Troy. We won't do it this week. But, um, you know, you kind of want your two best guys throwing the most critical innings at this point because, again, our bullpen hasn't stepped up in order to win those innings. And a lot of our games that we're struggling with have been in that sixth, seventh, eighth inning range. Um, and so even though 
Um, our starting numbers aren't gaudy by any means. Those are th- those two guys have really you know kind of been the backbone of our pitching staff. Um, and so right now we're going to keep it the same. Melton will open up the first game, and we'll open with Brian Leonhart and have Paredes come in after that and, and kind of see how that plays out. And, of course, Ricky's kind of a – we already know what we're going to get from him. It's going to be anywhere from, you know, five, six innings of pretty good pitching and competitive innings. And he hasn't given up, a you know, a, a, a bunch of big run innings. So we kind of know what we're getting there. So we're going to continue with that, yeah. Thank you, Coach. Hey, Coach, um, early in the year, you spoke about how, um, like, kind of the extra batting practice due to COVID was maybe some of the reason why you guys were swinging the bat a little bit better. Have you picked up anything as a coach in about how you can approach that to keep this going forward into the next year? Well, what I'll tell you is our pitchers would tell you that we hit probably more than anybody in the country because you know, they shag a lot. And so we're, we're not going to – we're not going to change that part of it. You know, our guys are still um, getting their extra time when they need it. Um, but we do hit a lot. It's part of the design. You know, I, I, I'm a firm believer is the only way you can learn how to what type of hitter you are is to swing the bat. And whether it's in practice or in a game, you know, our, you know, our, off- our offensive philosophy is swing the bat. You know, we're not a big take and, and, you know, that kind of stuff. I want our guys to learn how to hit, how to, who they are, what they can and cannot handle. The only way you can learn that is by swinging the bat. And so hopefully once you start to mature, like a Matt Ruddick, you understand what you can and cannot handle, and then th- those pitches become takes, and they might be strikes, but they're not swinging at those pitches that they know they can't be successful on, and they learn that by swinging the bat. And, again, we don't have enough – data in college baseball we don't play every single day we don't play 160 games or 140 games in minor league baseball that's where you learn to that what you can and cannot handle and and so we try to kind of turbocharge that by it's it's all swing baby swing the bat figure it out sometimes that's a curse you know we're gonna have short innings sometimes sam hates me for that but we're, we're gonna swing it and find out who we are and, and be aggressive with our approach and and hopefully that calculates into I know what I can and cannot handle. Maybe I won't exit the zone or exit what I'm looking for in that particular at bat. And we're starting to see that with more and more guys throughout the lineup. And obviously, the two guys that have really done a great job with that are is Matt Ruddick and and uh, Jaden Fine. Um, but now you're starting to see White Hendry, you know, manage his at bats way better than he did at the beginning of the season. Um, and it's throughout the the lineup. You know, it's just Caden Miller. Those types of guys that are really having great successful uh, seasons. Brian Leonhart, he's an advanced guy or he's an older guy, so he kind of understands as well. So that's our philosophy. Swing to bat. Um, and then on, on Sunday, you had numerous freshmen who starred and brought you guys <clears throat> to win. Um, could you just speak on the development of some of your freshmen and the younger players and you know just kind of that trajectory for the future of Atta Baseball? Well, I mean, they're they're good players first and foremost. We wouldn't recruit them, you know. They belong, you know. I think the the biggest battle for younger people is that that just that piece is understanding that they do belong. You know, you you arrive on campus sometimes. You're you're around some older guys that understand college baseball, Division One baseball, and it's a shock to your system. Um, and my whole message to them all year long is, hey, you belong here. You know, let it play. Quit, don't get in your own head and just just play. And, and you're good enough who you are right now. Obviously, you got to continue on process and improve. Um, but you know, the the two guys that have really done a nice job has, have been Fisher, Pyatt, and Cole Carrig. Those guys have been doing a great job for us. Um, and then Pancho Ruiz, um, he's a dynamic player. He's a dynamic hitter. Um, he's benefiting by being around a guy like Wyatt Hendry and, and having a mentorship with a, an advanced catcher, a guy that's going to be a big draft, you know, this summer. And so um, future's bright for that kid as well. And, and uh, again, they're starting to perform at a, a higher level than they were in February. And so I'm really, really encouraged at kind of how they're, they're advancing their game as we start to close out the season. Um, last question for me, the second half of the season for you guys, um, you have a lot on the road, and obviously with the Air Force series getting moved in the first half of the year, um, could you just speak to the, the challenge that you guys have with having as many road series as you have from all the teams that are chasing you? Well, we talk about it all year long, even though we haven't experienced very much, is that we we pride ourselves on being a great road team, you know, and, and, and I think uh, 
we've done a great job, you know, during my tenure here is going on the road and finding ways to, to win series. And so we embrace the opportunity. It's really not a, a challenge for us. It's more of an opportunity. And, and it's, it's much better to go to the Air Force in, in May than it is in March. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, but uh, I'm excited for it. I'm looking forward to getting on the road and, and you know, kind of uh, pulling together, circling the wagons and, and go out and try and win the conference on the road. It's going to be a lot of fun for us. It's great, great opportunity for us. Thank you. Hey, Mark. Uh, I want to get clear on, is Leonhardt going to start the first game of the series? No, it'll be the second game. So Melton will be Melton will go game one, Leon Hart game two, and then Tibbet game three. And you talked about the uh, critical innings. What makes it so you just are doing it for that one game but not the other two? Um, again, we're still in experiment mode. That's why you know, and I think you know, Mike, Mikey um, obviously is is a guy that's been around our program for a long time, and and uh, we present it to him first, and then you know the next thing is to present it to Melton. If if we don't get better out of the bullpen then you're going to probably see that as we move through the season because I want our best guys pitching those most critical innings, and they're doing a nice job getting us to the fifth or sixth. But really, once we're handing the ball off, our bullpen needs to get better. And they know that. That message is given to them every single day in practice. We're challenging them to get better. We're challenging them to uh, pound the strike zone and, and, and you know not give up big innings by giving free bases, and that's kind of what's been happening out of the bullpen. And so if we can shore that up, we got good enough arms to do it. Um, but right now that hasn't been happening. So that's kind of, we made that choice with the middle game and then moving forward, it might be the first two games. Could it even extend if you find it effective to all three? It could. Yeah. But you know, again, you got to have enough guys that can open, you know, and you, you look at a Brian Leonhardt, he's a, he's an experienced guy. He doesn't get too rattled on stuff. You know, he's kind of that calm, calm the water type guy. That's why we use him out of the bullpen. You can kind of bring him in to kind of snuff out a fire stop the bongo drums for banging in another dugout. But we want to maybe start with that, have that calming influence, you know, get a game off to a good start. Did a great job this weekend. We made a mistake. We didn't get an out on a, on a competitive double play ball. We threw the ball, so we couldn't get a force out. We get that force out, the, he doesn't give up any, and, it, and we look like geniuses, you know. And so bottom line is, is that, you know, our guys still have to make plays behind, you know, when we're making a decision like that, our guys have to make plays. And we didn't in that case, and he ended up giving two runs. But, you know, bottom line is if we get that out, he comes out of the, the that second inning with, with no runs, and we hand the ball off to Mikey, and we're, we're looking great. We're looking really smart. Mm -hmm. I think I want to ask you, you guys have kind of established yourselves as the team to beat the conference, but given some of the COVID things going on <clears> elsewhere, <throat> have you gotten a sense of who's the, the biggest challenger that's going to come out of the pack the, uh, kind of down the stretch? No. I mean, it, it, if you're not playing, you don't know who's going to challenge, right? So you, you mm -hmm. don't have a good feel for it. You know, and you get paused for 14 days. That's 14 days, or at least half of those days aren't practice days. And um, so um, we just have to kind of treat treat uh, each, you know, weekend as an opportunity, not worry about who we're playing and, and try and go win games and not worry about who we're playing or who's in front of us, who's in back of us. We just go, we, we have a good feel for who's going to compete for it, you know. Um, you know, and so we, our whole deal is that from here on out, we're basically playing a regional every single weekend. That's what we're playing for. Our postseason definitely started two weeks ago. And so we're in postseason mode right now. We're trying to get, you know, get to the end of it. So we have an opportunity to play in postseason, but our postseason's right now. This is kind of unusual because there's no Mountain West tournament at, at the end of the season. It, do you think that gets the guys a little more energized, a little more on point, that, hey, every series really really means something to get to the postseason? Well, I sure hope so. I hope they're listening to me because, uh, again, like I just told you, every weekend's a regional, and that's what we're trying to treat it as, is that, you know, this this is our opportunity. So it's, it's playoff baseball really from here on out. Um, and we can't have any slip ups. And, and so that's kind of where we are in the program. And in order to, to, to be rewarded at the end of the season, we got to continue to win series or outright sweep series in order to have that opportunity. It's a lot of pressure put on kids, but hey, it's a lot of fun, man. And we get to play a regional this weekend at Reno. Let's go. Without having that postseason tournament, or, or maybe I don't know if it matters either way, what do you think it takes for this to be more than a one bid lead? Um, I think we, we got to a place where, you know, with Boise in there, I think the schedule got set up so we could schedule better. And across the board, 
credit to all our, all of our programs before Bo- Boise dropped their program, um, aggressive schedules throughout, you know, and I think that's one commitment that we have is that we're trying to, on the front end of our conference, is play some, some really tough series. Um, as you saw in, in, in uh, even 2020, we went out to Coastal Carolina playing a tournament. We went to Oklahoma to play out there. Um, coming up, we're going to play in the MLB4 tournament to start off next year. Um, we have our Tony Gwynn tournament. We're, we're going to Cal. Um, our midweek games are as good as anybody in the country. And, and so, um, But across the board, all of our teams are making a commitment to play better competition outside of conference in order to raise the RPI. And, and that's everybody in the conference is doing that. So we're going to continue to put that at the forefront to f- make sure that everybody's, you know, aggressively scheduling so we can raise our RPI and at the back end get multiple teams into the tournament. Thank you. Thanks, Kurt. Back to Lee. Uh, hey, Coach, just a sidebar question. Uh, San Diego State probably be- better than anybody in the country has done a magnificent job protecting the kids, guiding the kids, uh, to stay away from positive tests. Uh, what's been the challenge for you to oversee this program and direct these kids to do what they have to do so you don't have outbreaks? And secondly, how many of your kids have gotten a vaccine? Um, we're, we're almost halfway home on vaccines, you know, and, and I think we're still, we're, we're continue each week that uh, guys are getting fully vaccinated. So we're, we should be past halfway by then. And, and really the, the, the protocols and everything were, were put in place by our university, by our athletic department in the fall. So, uh, and they were very stringent and, and, and very hard and hard to manage. And so right now really managing it, it's routine now. It's not, it's not like a challenge anymore. Our guys understand um, the protocols that are in place, whether we're at home, on the road. Um, they understand that when we're on the road, we don't leave our room. We stay, stay in the hotel room, and we play baseball, and we come home. Um, you know, we don't go out for team meals. We don't do any of that stuff. We make sure, you know, we're, we're socially distanced. We're masked up pretty much the entire time. Um, but that, all that stuff was put in place this fall. And, and again, as cumbersome and challenging as it was, it put us in a position now, knock on wood, that we should be able to play a full season and probably be the only school in the conference playing an entire season. Um, and so that's a credit to our administration, you know, our university putting us in a position to do that. And so I'm very thankful for that. So that right now, again, it's not a challenge. It's more just reminders of making sure that we stay on task, um, you know, when we're at home. You guys aren't going out, you know, outside and jacking around doing stuff, and they've committed to that, you know. And, and the whole the whole message to our entire athletic department is that, you know, when you're making a commitment to play sports here at San Diego State, you're making a commitment to these protocols in order to play games and compete when your season comes around. And I think our school's done a phenomenal job of doing that. 